Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's Bite Size Talk. With us is uh, Maxime from Sequera, and uh, today he is going to dabble into NF tests and is telling us how to implement NF tests on a pipeline level. Um, off to you, Maxime. Uh, thank you very much, Swan. Uh, so let me share my screen. That should be the right stuff. Okay. So hello everyone. Uh, so yes, so I'm going to explain like uh, not NF test because I believe we already have some bytes about that, but how to properly uh, snapshot, uh, do some tests at the pipeline level. So that was something that we started working on. I think it was last year already at the at the summit uh, and at the hackathon in Barcelona, and it's been a long road. Uh, but it's been quite interesting and quite fun. And uh, it led me to a couple of weeks, uh, it was like re last week, yes, last week, to uh, release, to make like the first release of the NFT utils, which is a plugin for NF test. That is, that really has like a couple of functions to simplify the capturing of a snapshot at a, at a pipeline level. So this is the plugin. I want to really thank like everyone that has involved into making the plugin work, and um, yes, and all of the idea and like getting back and forth and uh, frankly making it concrete. And also, I want to thank all of the people from the maintainer side that uh, pushed me to make this uh, talk today. So we have, for the moment, it's not yet on the website, but it should be there soon on the NFCore website. Uh, so we have a couple of functions. The first one is just to remove the next row version uh, from the snapshot from the YAML file. So it's very simple. You have that before, you will get that after. Uh, I, stand, I upgrade, upgraded it a bit so you can remove any, any key uh, any key and any sub key from a YAML map. Uh, what is most interesting, and that's thanks to uh, John, what uh, the get uh, all files from the uh, function, which basically uh, lets you get all of the file from a folder, and uh, you can get uh, you can make you can use some glob to select out to exclude some file or to select some specific file. And we can also uh, include uh, nft.ignore, uh, no, dot nft ignore uh, file that contain a list of GLOB. And that is very powerful whenever we want to try some uh, pipeline level test. Uh, also, what we can do, uh, we can have, we have a get relative path that will just showcase the relative path of the file. And I will explain to you what it will mean like in, when we're doing the snapshot. And basically with all of that, what we can do is make some proper uh, snapshot at a pipeline level. And it's actually quite fast. I've been working on this PR since this morning. And I already have, so not 28 uh, file, not 20, yes, 28 file, but not 28 test, but I have like one, two, three, four, five, six, That's six different uh, files uh, for the pipeline novel that were uh, all started this morning and are all ready to use. So let me just change the view here, to just view the file. <clears throat> if you look at the file here, let's, let's look at the file. So I'm doing a Nextflow pipeline test. So this is really a Nextflow pipeline test. Uh, what it will do here, I just have like the proper title for the test because that way I understand what is happening inside. Uh, let's grab just the default test. It will be easier to understand. So it's just running with profile test because I assume that's all the default tests that we want to do. So what I'm doing first, I'm getting all of the stable name. So which uh, given all of the files that are produced in the pipeline, these are all of the files that don't have stable content, but have a stable name. So and from that, what I'm doing, I'm just getting all of the files, expecting the files that are in uh, pipeline info and that uh, match HTML, JSON, or TXT, because I know that they are the ones that match uh, 
all of the files that we produce as NF Core uh, that are created on startup with a timestamp. E and I use the relative, oops, uh, sorry, no double clicking. Okay, I know that. I use a relative true here uh, parameter to get the relative path of the file. Uh, that way, in the snapshot, it will look nicer, which I will showcase just after that. Here, what I'm doing with table pass, I'm using the same stuff. I want from paramodir all of the file, and I don't want to include the files that are in this uh, .nft ignore file. Here, what I'm doing, I want all of the cram file, because yes, why not like use NFT BAM as well and do some extra tests while, while we are at it. So here I just want to select, oh, sorry, I should really not double click stuff. I really want to, uh, yeah, what am I doing? Sorry. Okay, let's grab back at it. Uh, here I just want to select all of the crumb files. So I'm just grabbing with a uh, globe from everywhere, everything that is a crumb file. Here I'm creating a FASTA file. Here I'm getting my assertion. So I decided, yes, we are at the pipeline level. So it might be interesting to know the number of tasks that are successful. I assume they are constant at the at this uh, at this level. I'm removing the next row version from the pipeline multi-QC software version uh, YAML file. Here I have all of the stable name, all of the stable pass, and from the CRAM file. I want to snapshot the file name and the uh, MD5 uh, checksum of the raw reads because I'm not interested in the header because that's the stuff that is mainly variable in, uh, in our test. So this is what I'm doing. And if I check the snapshot now for the default test on NFT, so here I have 23, which is the number of tasks. So that's good. Maybe it will be interesting to just have a text there, but snapshots are not really meant to be open and to look at, so I think we'll be fine. Here we have all of the version uh, that have been used in this current test, and it looks super nicely uh, that way, displayed that way. And as we can see here in the workflow, we don't have the Nextflow version because we are testing this over like multiple versions of Nextflow. Here, these are all of the files that are produced by the pipeline. As we can see, there are lots of files that are produced by the pipeline. And now we are really capturing all of the files. And as we can see here, we have the full, the, not the full pass, but the relative pass to all of the files. And that is super nice because that way you can really see each file that are captured. And I think that was a very good idea. And here it really contains all of the files that are there. And from that, what I can do as well after that, I'm doing the proper snapshot. And here, it's just the files that we want to snapshot. And here, here they are with their snapshot. Here, all of the current files that were produced with their uh, snapshot as well. And we are good. So in file looking a bit more into the NFT, the dot .NFT ignore file, I can see these are all of the files that I want to ignore. And that's done. That was really as simple as that. And it really took me like a, like a couple of hours to uh, produce like six, six different uh, pipeline novel tests. Um, oh, yes. And I think what was in, what could be interesting as well is to see the check. So currently, we are working on making the, all of the CI uh, be a bit better and works uh, in a nicer way. But at the moment, this is working. We have all of the tests in the pipeline level. And as we can see, they all have a green tick. So that's completely useless for us at the moment. So let me uh, go back at an older test. As, as you can see, I've been working on this the whole morning. And just previously, this previous test was failing. And if we have a look at what was failing, I can see that a run NF test was failing. And if I check here, I can see that one uh, snapshot failed. If I look a bit up, I can see what was the snapshot that failed. It's here. I can see that this file uh, is not the, has not the same snapshot that was uh, expected. So what I did in this case, I just added this file to my uh, .NFT ignore. I rerun the snapshot. 
and here I got it. What I could have got done as well was instead of rerunning the snapshot, was to edit the snapshot the snapshot file and remove remove this line. But yes, I'm already editing JSON file and so on, so I'd rather not edit edit snapshot file as well. Let, let's not be uh, uh, let's not, not go too deep into into file. Uh, and I think that's more or less uh, done for me. Uh, is there any question or did I went a bit too fast on some particular uh, details? So uh, thank you, Maxime. Uh, anyone can now unmute themselves and ask their questions. Do we have any questions? Otherwise, I might uh, just start. So, what I not I didn't quite understand is how you actually use these functions that you introduced in the beginning. So, oh. use them yeah. inside the test definition, or yes. So, basically, in my uh, nf test file, so the whatever dot nf dot test, you have your uh, next row pipeline, and Wait, let me just show the file again, view file. Oh, also before I show that, yes, you're completely right, I forgot that. We need in the nftest config, we need to include the, the plugins. Hmm. Otherwise, nftest doesn't have access to the function, obviously. So let's go back to the file now. Uh, and here, that's just how I use it. Remove next row version, that's calling the function on the. So, uh, that's removing the function on this file. And here, uh, stable name, I'm using the get all file from dir function on the parameter dir with a couple of parameters that are all explained in the, in the documentation. Awesome. Uh, we opened a channel on Slack called NFT-plugins, where you can ask people about uh, all of our favorite NFT uh, plugin. Yes, NFT is for NF test, not uh, any other thing. OK. Uh, we have a question from Matthias. Um, he's asking how many NF core pipelines already have NF test? Uh, I know that uh, RNAseq has it, obviously. Uh, Sarek has had it for a while, but it was not working super well. We are slightly adding that in uh, in Sarek, uh, but it will take a bit of time. Uh, Metalseq has it because uh, Satish and Zenmoon has been uh, working on it. And I think Nation has it because, yes, Edmund was working on it. Uh, and I'm a bit unsure about the other pipeline. Yes, I need to check the other pipeline, what they are and uh, what they're doing and how they're doing it. But yes, I'm I'm sorry, I don't have uh, any more any more uh, clearer answer about that. But we'll get there. <laughs> yeah, we'll get there. Yeah, a uh, question from Evangelos. Sorry if I didn't pronounce that correctly. Uh, can these functions also be imported and used in module tests? Uh, I don't see why not. I only really tried them like at the pipeline level because for me, they really work well at the pipeline level because on the module test and on the sub workflow test, what we do, we use the direct output from the module uh, because the module and the sub workflow emit something. The pipeline at the moment, not all pipeline emits uh, channels or emit anything out of the pipeline. So at the moment, what we do, we just capture all of the files that have been published by the pipeline. So I'm guessing this is a kind of uh, stuff that might evolve uh, in a tiny bit. But yes, I don't see why it cannot be used in, uh, in the module level. But I'm guessing we might not want to get the, we might not have the published dir uh, directive in the module or in the sub workflow. So I'm not sure how it will work. Are there more questions from anyone in the audience? I have one documentation question. So uh, um, in order to run tests for pipelines or create tests for pipelines, is the documentation available? Because I 
think the one that I've seen is only on a module level. Uh, no, that's a very good stuff. I will make a PR to update uh, all of the stuff. I, I need to make a PR anyway to to update the documentation about uh, NFTs. So I will do that on the on our guidelines. Perfect. Thank you. So if ah, there's another question, uh, Yoon. Um, I'm confused with stable name and stable path. In the test that you are showing, shouldn't you use stable name star dot name as according to the docs? Uh, so yes, I could do that. Uh, so basically, I was using stable name dot star uh, before uh, uh, because I didn't have the relative pass. Uh, Option, oops, sorry. I didn't have the relative pass uh, option within the get of file from there. It was outside of that. So what I was doing with the with the star was to get all of the file uh, from there and just get their name with the dot name. And then from that, I was applying the get relative pass function. Know that with the 0.0.3 .0 release that was just out this morning, uh, I can just use the relative uh, true option here directly, and I can output that directly, uh, and I can directly use that without having to resort to any like uh, dot star name or any other weird notation that I know I don't really like, but uh, yes, yeah, so that way it looks much clearer. OK. This seems to answer the question. So if we don't have any more questions from the audience, I would like to thank you, Maxime, and uh, of course, everyone else for listening in. And um, I hope to see you soon for the next Bite Size Talk. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank you.